We'll start the installation by unloading, removing the packaging materials, and placing the ramps and platforms in their approximate positions. Start with the components upside down. This is necessary to install the brackets that connect ramp sections one to another, as well as the brackets required to attach the handrails later. Then, place the various smaller components and hardware packages in the areas they will be required. Assemble the ramp sections first. Start with the upper end of the system and work your way to the final ramp section. The end brackets attach with one bolt installed in the innermost of the two threaded inserts, not the outer. Wherever two ramps are joined, use a pair of large brackets. Do not tighten at this time. Align the ends of both ramps, place the brackets into the slot in both side rails, and then secure with four bolts and washers per side. Complete the placement of all brackets needed before moving to the next step. In most cases, the top of the ramp is supported by a platform or an existing porch or landing. However, there are situations where it is necessary to support the top of the ramp with legs attached to the ramp itself. In this case, a pair of top support brackets are used. These brackets come in pairs and have two mounting holes. Preassemble the leg brackets and bolts as you did on the previous brackets. Tighten these bolts completely. Now we will assemble the handrails for the platform. The vertical posts are secured into each corner with two set screws, one below the deck and one above. Start by loosening the set screws below the deck. Back these screws out far enough to allow the vertical post to slide in. Now stand the platform on its side and loosen the set screws above the deck. The vertical posts have a series of holes, two three-hole groups and one two-hole group. The two-hole group end goes into the corner of the platform. Position the end of the post about a quarter inch inside the corner pocket. Tighten the set screw below the deck to secure the vertical post. Repeat this process with the rest of the posts. Place the platform in an upright position and tighten the set screws above the deck. Once the vertical posts are secure, we'll install the horizontal portions of the handrails. Begin by installing the protective covers at the top of the posts. Each section requires two round tubes and one curb section. These parts have screw lugs at bottom ends. Start with the curb sections followed by the round tubes. Install the round tubes and the curb sections by passing the attaching screw through the holes in the vertical posts and into the screw lugs. Get all of the screws started before final tightening. Do not over tighten. Install the supplied plugs into the center holes of the three hole groups on one side of each section. save time later, it's helpful to install the protective plugs into all the support legs for the whole system at this point. There are two set screws on each outside corner of the platform. Move each platform into position by measuring out the length of each ramp section and setting the platforms at the end of those measurements. In this case, the first component of the system is a ramp running off of the porch to a platform. So, we will begin measuring from there and determine where the first platform will need to be. Once the platform is placed, insert support legs into each corner of the platform. 
In some cases, the platform will need to be set at a height lower than the standard foot will allow. The platform of a standard foot is limited to the minimum height of 6 inches. A low profile foot is available for use when the rise is less than 6 inches, but over 3 and 3 quarter inches. One corner at a time, lift the platform to the approximate height and insert the leg into the foot. Make sure the leg is completely bottomed into the foot and tighten one of the set screws in the corner pocket. Now we can adjust the platform to its final height. Use your laser level to set one corner of the platform at its final height. Once this height is set, tighten both screws on that corner. Place a long level on the platform, setting one corner to the proper height. Then use the level to adjust the height of the other corner to the same level as the corner already at the correct height. Tighten both screws in this corner. Tighten the thumb screw on the foot to secure the foot to the leg. Now we'll set the first ramp section that runs from the porch to the first platform. This ramp will hang from two ramp hangers on the platform. These hangers engage the side rail of the platform. Once the ramp is resting on the hangers, slide both ramp hangers until they are against the ramp side rails. You want both hangers to be as far as possible for greater stability and safety. Now we will join the next two ramp sections together to form another ramp run by simply repeating the same steps we used on the first ramp run of this system. Repeat this process as needed. The next platform in this system is a turn back platform. In this case, we will join a 5x4 platform with another 5x4 platform. This will create a 5x8 turn back platform. We start just like the previous platform, loosening the inner set screws, installing the vertical posts, installing the protective caps and plugs, installing the curbs and handrail sections. We do this on both platforms before we join the platforms together. The foot can be installed in different positions as needed. This allows the platform to be positioned against a wall if required. Platforms are connected by using a pair of platform connector brackets. These work by connecting a full length support leg on one platform to a shorter leg on the other platform. Place these connector brackets onto the legs on the side that will be joined with the other platform. Leave them loose and finish setting and leveling the platform. The platform connector bracket can be installed either above or below the platform curbing. In this case, we are installing it above. Now assemble the other platform that will make up the turn back platform. In this case, we will only put support legs in one end of the platform. The other end will be supported by the first platform. Now we can connect the two platforms. Slide the connector bracket up so it contacts the platform corner pocket. Tighten that bracket to secure it in place. Now, set the other platform on the top of the connector. Slide a short leg through the platform corner through the connector. Tighten all the set screws on both the connector and the platform corner. We can now set the next ramp in the system. Again, place the ramp hangers on both platforms and set the ramp in place. Unless otherwise stated in the supplied layout, it is very important that none of the ramps in any system exceed the 1 in 12 ADA rule. Now that we have ensured that our ramp runs are ADA compliant, we can set the last ramp run on the turn back platform using the ramp hangers. At the lower end of the system where the ramp meets the ground, we install a ground transition ramp. 
This ramp is made up of two sections. The first section engages the end of the ramp. The second section engages the first section and is held in place by two screws which are driven into the rounded connections on each side. The second section of the ground transition ramp has two pre-punched holes used to secure the bottom to a wood or concrete surface as needed. Now that the ramps and platforms are set in place, we will install the support leg. Slide the support leg through the support leg bracket and into a foot. Make sure that the leg is vertical, then secure the bracket in place. Adjust the height until both ramp side rails are parallel then secure the support leg. We can now move on to installing the handrail sections. In places where two handrails are needed, they are joined with plastic connectors. These connectors are inserted into the handrail tubes, and the handrail tubes are then pushed together. Although not required, a clamp to hold the two handrails together during the install is very helpful. Next, we connect the ramp handrails to the platform handrails on the turn back platform. Insert the elbows into the ends of the handrails and adjust the elbows so they align with one another. Measure the space between the two elbows and cut a section of tube to fit between those two elbows. Now remove the screw that holds the elbow halves together. Place the elbow halves into the handrail tubes and the cut tube. Tighten the inner screw on each elbow half. This will secure the elbow to the tube. Once this is done, the elbow and the tubes can be reassembled into position. Loops are used to finish the end of any handrail section not connected by closure kits or corner kits. Slide both joiners into the handrail tubes with the set screw on the joiner facing down. Slide the loop over the joiners, secure by tightening the set screw in each joiner. Another style of loop has swaged ends and does not require joiners. Slide the loop into the handrail. Use a rubber mallet to be sure the loop is fully seated. Secure with two self-tapping screws from below. Install protective caps on all exposed ramp side rails. Glue is supplied for this. The last task is to install two hold down clips on the end of every ramp that connects to a platform. This is an important safety requirement and prevents the ramp from being lifted off the hanger brackets. Use the supplied self-tapping screws to clamp these clips in place. Upon the completion of your ramp installation, make sure that all cardboard boxes, plastic bags, and other debris are collected and placed in your truck or trailer. The use of any of the end user's trash or recycling receptacles is strictly prohibited. Bring all trash and debris with you. Once the area is completely free of all trash, debris, and tools, bring back the paperwork to the end user and alert them that the ramp is installed. If available, the end user should test the ramp before you leave to ensure that they will not face any unexpected challenges. Once the ramp has passed the end user's test run, obtain the proper signatures of acceptance from the end user and thank them for their time and participation.